Hey, Shuichi, are you hesitating again? Come on, man, there's no need for that. Like I said, you're my sidekick. I take responsibility for any mistakes my sidekick makes. So use those skills of yours I believe in to shove the truth down their throats. You believe in my detective skills? That's right. I'm going to leave it all to you, Shuichi. It has to be you! There's one more thing I still have to confirm. But Kirumi is the prime suspect. Me? What? K Kirumi? Oh... So Kirumi is the culprit! That is not yet a certainty. Let us hear her testimony first. Is this true, Kirumi? I cannot believe you would suspect me. If that is the case, then I will have to deny it. I will not let you make the wrong choice. The wrong choice? If you do believe it is me, are you prepared to stand by that decision? I will refute your accusations with all my might, for everyone's sake. I, of course, am not the culprit. The crime was committed at night time. And you have no alibi, do you? An alibi for night time? I believe most of us do not have it. I have evidence that proves you're the culprit. Do you think we would fall for such nonsense? The trick relied on complex mechanisms to work. But someone like you could be skilled enough to pull it off. Preposterous. That could have been done by anyone. Kirumi is thin and has a nice body. She and Ryoma could have totally shared an interview. We all could have, except perhaps Gonta. Of course, I'm not the culprit. The crime was committed at nighttime. And you have no alibi, do you? An alibi for nighttime? I believe most of us do not have it. I'll reveal the truth! Maybe we can't prove everyone's alibi, but we can still pinpoint the culprit. How so? Last night, Kaido and I heard Maki speaking with Ryoma. But I haven't mentioned what happened after. Kirumi, any thoughts? Did you return to your respective dorm rooms? Yes, we did. But I couldn't fall asleep, so I was awake until morning. Which allowed me to hear a certain sound in the night. Last night, I heard the sound of someone leaving their room and exiting the door. And after some time, I heard the sound of them returning. Could it have been the culprit? But all you heard was a sound? That doesn't mean you know who made it. Indeed, it doesn't. But I didn't hear the sound of someone going down the stairs. Which must mean that whoever left has a room on the first floor. No one on the second floor left the dorm that night. So everyone on the second floor has an alibi? 
You cannot determine the culprit with just that. On the contrary, once we rule out the second floor, we know who the culprit is. Because preparing the ropeway required time to be spent in the gym, it's extremely likely that the culprit helped set up the magic show. In short, Himiko, Angie, Kaito, or Kirumi. I see. So among the four, the only one with a room on the first floor of the dorms is... Yes. Only Kirumi. You heard a sound, huh? Well, I hear a load of BS. But unfortunately for you, Kirumi, your time's up. We already know you're the only one capable of setting all this up. Right, Shuichi? Right. The only person who could have prepared this murder is Kirumi. Well, the preparations in the gym, in any case. And why do you believe that? Before the culprit could put the body into the tank, several steps needed to be taken. Like tying the rope to the gym window and putting a partition in the piranha tank. That's right. Ryoma's body entered the gym from the window, but that required preparation could only have been done when Kirumi was by herself in the gym before nighttime. But Kirumi was alone in the gym for only, like, five minutes. Not enough time for the whole murder, but enough time to set it up. Enough time to tie the rope on the window frame and put the pain in the piranha tank. This is my selfless devotion! While I do understand where you are coming from, I assure you this is just... a part of your petty imagination. An empty theory created from nihilism. If it were solely the rope and partition, I suppose five minutes might be enough time. I accept that, however, the crux of your argument is not but a guess. You continue to force the facts to conform to your misguided- When you consider that the crux of your argument is faulty, your entire case falls apart! What do you mean by crux of the argument? How is it just a guess? I am referring to the rope. Now, with that rope, it is possible to reach the gym window from the third floor window, but there is no evidence to indicate this had happened. In other words, it is just a guess, and then you add assumptions and hearsay to that guess. It is nothing more than deception. I am referring to the rope. Now, with that rope, it is possible to reach the gym window from the third floor with but there is no evidence to indicate this could happen. I'll cut through your words! I have evidence. The abrasions left on the window frames at the gym and the lab. Were those scratches from when the rope was tied to the window frame? Just tying the rope to the frame wouldn't cause so much damage. The rope that was tied to the frames must have been weighed down significantly. The frames didn't break but they were left with distinct marks. Those scratches are proof that you used a rope to carry the body to the windowsill. Oh? What's wrong, Kirumi? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Hey, what's wrong? Hey, 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 hey! Is Kirumi quiet because... Is that's what happened? Please answer us, Kirumi! 
Shuichi is doing this for your sake. If it is for my sake, then it would be much easier to forfeit. But I cannot allow that. Because I must do this for everyone! I have a duty and a responsibility. I must serve everyone and protect them. So I refuse to surrender. They won't forgive me if I do! Kirumi, who exactly is this everyone you're talking about? I've just got a weird feeling about this. When you said everyone, it felt like you weren't talking about us. It felt like you were talking about someone who isn't here. Someone who isn't here? Someone outside of the Academy? Hey, do you think Kirumi saw her own motive video? Huh? The motive video? You saw your important someone in danger, so you committed murder, right? Is that true? I am so sorry for making such a mess. Because of that, I made all of you assume something unnecessary. Unnecessary? You saying I'm wrong? This everyone you're talking about. It is all of you, of course. Really? Do you swear to a tour? Yes, really. So please believe me. I am not the culprit. I do not care what becomes of me, but I will not allow any of you to die. Because I made a promise to Kaede. She wished for all of us to escape together. I want to fulfill my duties as the ultimate maid. I wish to serve everyone. So please believe me, you have to! Kirumi? Um, are we totally sure Kirumi's the culprit? Maybe it's someone else! Are we sure Kokichi isn't the culprit? <laughs> How rude. I, Gonta just can't believe Kirumi would kill Ryuma. Kirumi's breakfasts were the best. She always treated us so well. She really is like a mom. Perhaps it was after she gained our trust that she saw her chance to strike. You really are screwed up. Screwed up from head to toe! Even through your clothes, I can tell! Shuichi, please reconsider suspecting me as the culprit. You only suspect me because I was at the gym during nighttime yesterday, correct? But you cannot accuse me of being the culprit with that insufficient proof. It is still possible for Maki and Kaito to have gone to the gym. They do not have alibis. They could have pretended to help Himiko, but secretly prepared the murder. When you put it that way, it does seem possible. We can't accuse Kirumi just based on our alibis! Guys, maybe suspecting Kirumi is wrong. Yeah, maybe we should think it over one more time. I... made a promise. As the ultimate detective, I made a promise to seek the truth. I made a promise to Kaede, so I am not turning back now.
So you still believe I am the culprit? But there is no evidence to indicate that I am- No, there is. I have proof that you're the culprit. I realized it when we determined that the rope weight was used to move the body. If it was indeed Kirumi who moved the body with the makeshift rope weight, then the final clue falls into place. The final clue? The damning evidence that proves Kirumi is the culprit. Shuichi, won't you please tell me why you are so desperate to pin me as the culprit? Don't you want to protect everyone? I'm doing this because I want to protect everyone. Shuichi. Then you're wrong! Your deduction is all wrong! Your words aren't going to convince me now. Not when I know the truth. All you care about is your own reasoning. You don't even listen to others. I can't bet everyone's lives on a deduction made by a self-righteous brat. You can't save anyone! of black fabric in the pool. That's the final clue that proves you're guilty. It's been bothering me for a while. I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought it was just trash at first, but I couldn't dismiss it entirely. Now that the class trial has come this far, I know for certain It's an important piece of the puzzle. Because like the inner two, it's evidence the culprit couldn't dispose of. Huh? Why not? Using the ropeway, you could slide the inner tube from the lab to the gym. But how would you control it? If it kept sliding and hit the window, the momentum would have thrown the body off. To prevent that from happening, the culprit needed some way to adjust the speed. For example, the culprit could have used their hands for friction. Yeah, so what? You're still wrong! Your logic is flawed! Kirumi, why are you becoming increasingly erratic? There is such absolute beauty in trying to fight against the truth. What truth? That black cloth is just trash. You can't prove I'm the culprit with just that! No, it's not just trash. It's proof that you're the culprit. Correct. What is this truth? That is just your empty deduction. You continue to confuse everyone! In this class trial, everyone's life is at stake! Because of your self-righteous truth, Everyone might die! In this class trial, everyone's life is at stake! Because of your self-righteous truth? Ah! I completely understand your reasoning. But I will never accept it. It seems you wish to pin me as the culprit. 
You do not have any evidence! You are only providing us with speculation! We only wish to protect everyone! Why must you interfere? I completely understand your reasoning. But I will never accept it! It seems you wish to pin me as the culprit. You do not have any evidence! <laughs> what does that piece of trash prove? It ends here! <laughs> the piece of fabric came from Kirumi's black glove. Kirumi's glove? If the culprit were slowing their descent by grabbing the rope with their hands, there would have been a lot of friction, easily enough to cause rope burn. But our culprit was smart. They weren't burned because they weren't barehanded. Yeah, the culprit had gloves on. One got all torn up from the friction and... And it fell into pool? From what I remember, the only one who wears black gloves is Kirumi, right? The gloves on your hands now. I take it they're from your dorm? The extra uniforms in our rooms are made of the same material we're wearing now. We can test my theory by comparing the fabric scrap with your glove. <laughs> well, Kirumi? Will you allow us to compare the black fabric we found in the pool with your gloves? <laughs> huh? What's the matter? Why are you sweating so much? Kirumi, what's wrong? I will show you the truth.
This is the truth of the case. The victim's body was found this morning during Himiko's underwater escape act. When we saw the piranhas in the tank, we thought that Himiko's escape failed. Of course, it was all part of the act. Himiko's escape went perfectly. But when Angie opened the curtain in front of the tank, we saw Ryoma with piranha swarming around him. Before any of us could react, the piranhas devoured Ryoma's body. And all that was left were his bones and the handcuffs he was wearing. That horrifying sight was the finishing touch on the culprit's own twisted magic trick. The culprit obfuscated the time and place of the murder, implicating Himiko in the process. In truth, the crime began last night, around 8.55 p.m. While preparing for the show in the gym, the culprit had a chance to be alone. It was then that the culprit used the ladder to reach the piranha tank and removed the glass lid to put inside the tank. They used it as a partition to force the piranhas to one side of the tank. Next, the culprit took the rope from the stage wing in the gym. And used the ladder once more, this time to climb up to the gym's window. Once there, they opened the window and tied one end of the rope to the window frame. The rope was then thrown out the window toward the pool. These preparations were key for the culprit's elaborate plan. At nighttime, past midnight, the culprit asked Ryoma to meet at his lab. All the pieces were in place. The culprit was ready to murder. First, the culprit knocked Ryoma out, probably striking him from behind. Then, they put the handcuffs from the shower room on Ryoma's wrists. And shoved his head into the sink filled with water. From the water and the pain of drowning, Ryoma should have woken up and struggled. The culprit anticipated his resistance, which is why Ryoma was handcuffed. The struggle left scrapes on the cuffs and sink, but in the end, Ryoma succumbed. Ryoma was dead, but the culprit's plan had only just begun. They removed the cable from the tennis net and hung it from the window facing the pool.
And then, at the pool, they connected the wire and the rope from the gym window. They returned to the lab after picking up one last thing. The rubber inner tube that was in the pool's tool shed. Once back in the lab, the culprit pulled the cable, bringing up the rope. They pulled until the rope was taut, then tied it to the lab's window frame. And thus, the gym and the lab windows were connected by a single rope. After making a hanger of sorts with another length of rope tied to the inner tube, they hung the inner tube on the rope connecting the windows. That's how the culprit created the ropeway that was used to move the body. An impressive premeditated murder, but the culprit made two crucial mistakes. The culprit got on the inner tube with Rioma's body and slid toward the gym. With the height difference between the windows, they would have built up quite some speed. To avoid crashing through the window, the culprit used a brake. They used their own hand to grip the rope and slow down. That would have caused significant rope burn had the culprit not been wearing gloves. But due to the friction, part of a glove tore off and dropped in the pool. Regardless, the culprit reached the window and put Rioma's body into the piranha tank. The glass pane not only kept the piranhas and the body separated, it also kept the piranhas so close together, they concealed the body. After that, all the culprit had to do was untie the rope and the inner tube. But that's when they made their second mistake. One end of the rope came loose, and the inner tube dropped into the pool. Thus, the culprit was forced to leave two key pieces of evidence, the fabric and the inner tube. They couldn't retrieve the evidence because of the rule against swimming at nighttime. And that's the whole story. Am I wrong, Kirumi Tojo, the ultimate maid? That's the conclusion I reached. Do you have any objections? This is very, very unfortunate, Shuichi. My pride as a maid demands that I fulfill every request that I receive. But to end like this... Does that mean you admit it? Kirumi... Why use your own gloves, though? The warehouse should have had plenty. There weren't any. Obviously, she would have used them if they were available. Jeez, Monokuma provided everything but the gloves. That's pretty sadistic. But thanks to him, at least the game became way more interesting. So, it's decided. This case was decided the moment someone, who shall not be named, opened their big mouth. But we, we don't know that. Maybe the real culprit is someone nobody expects. 
Gravity is right. No need to worry. Oh, Monodem. You're like a mommy taking care of her sick child. All right. Let's go. The heart-racing excitement as the blackened and the spotless finally face off. It's voting time! Now then, it seems the voting has finished. Let's see the result. Right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? <laughs> <laughs> 